Welcome and aloha. My name is Mark Shklov. I am the host of Think Tech Hawaii's Law Across the Sea program. Today, we are going to transcend the sea of law to learn about meditation and the law. My guest is Hawaii attorney Barry Sullivan. Barry has been recognized as a Hawaii super lawyer and one of Hawaii's best lawyers in real estate law, corporate law, and commercial litigation. There's a lot of stress in law, and what we're going to discuss today may seem like something far across the sea from the profession of law. Besides practicing law, Barry practices meditation, and that'll be the focus of our discussion. What is meditation? How do, does meditation and the law coexist? What can we learn from the intersection of meditation and the law? Barry, welcome. Good to see you. Nice to see you, Mark. Thanks for having me on the show today. Well, you know, I, I've been a lawyer for over 40 years. Uh, I know a little bit about meditation, but before we get into that, tell me about your practice of law. Tell me a little bit about what you do, what type of law you practice. Sure. What's that about? <clears throat> so I uh, started practicing law. I first came out in 1991. I came here directly after law school, and for the last 27 plus years, I've been doing a combination of things. Um, a lot of r large real estate transactions. So everything from acquisitions, land use, um, so a lot of hotels, resort communities, and the corporate structures that go hand in hand with that. Um, some putting it all together. Putting it all together, and a lot of it is financing based. So getting things financed and built, and then on the back end when things don't go well, we get involved in the litigation side. Yeah. yeah. So. so substantial transactions in real estate, getting everybody together, getting the money. Hopefully it'll work. Hopefully it, it runs well. Yep. And then uh, sometimes it doesn't. Right? Sometimes you have to get in and fight, right? Sometimes you got to fight, but the, uh, I think the big reward <clears throat> is, you know, you're putting together a pretty complicated meal. A lot, of, a lot of hands touching the food, a lot of ingredients. And for me, you know, the joy is kind of writing that process and getting to a successful outcome. Okay. And then, uh, fortunately, I haven't had one of my deals go into litigation, but when others in similar types of situations, I've, me and my partners have been involved on the litigation side and trying to undo or redo transactions that haven't worked out particularly well. Okay, and in those deals, it's been my experience in law that there's some stress involved in trying to work some of those deals out to make them happen and when they, when they fall apart. Too. There is the profession of law and the uh, Living with stress go hand in hand. <laughs> one, you cannot have one without the other. Okay. All right. So I want to talk mm -hmm. now. I want to go off from that stressful part of your life. And I've learned that you do a lot of meditation and that you're into, into that. What is meditation? What type of things are you into? What, what, what does it mean? And how did you get involved in it? So tell me. Um, what, what, what is meditation? Let's start there. So meditation is something that you do. So the, the key thing, it's not something you read about. It's not something somebody tells you about. You either are doing it or you're not. And so to me, it, it's very much like the practice of law, the practice of meditation. You have mm. to be doing it. And you're building upon kind of the instruction manual, whether it's in a book or whether it's with a teacher or uh, an instructor. And you're incorporating what they're telling you about the lessons from their own practice and from you know, whatever you know, text or history there is. But you're really making it personal. And without personal meditation, there is no meditation. It is different from watching somebody repair your, your washer or your dryer. This is you taking apart the control center, getting out the screwdriver, doing all the work yourself. So first and foremost, meditation is your own toolkit that you're developing, that you're using, 
And then the other part is the mental habits. And so those include, um, some of it is concentration, which is not the focus of meditation, but it is an aspect of med meditation. And the real um, uh, nub to me is um, attention. And being able to bring your attention and recognize the arising within your own body of feelings and thoughts and sensations. So I often uh, uh, analogize it to when you get into a uh, tussle with somebody. Mm. You don't immediately clench your hand into a fist. There are lots of things that happened before then, and probably the first thing that happened is you had a negative reaction to something somebody said or did. And so if you are aware of that first nub, that first arising in your mind, and as you feel it, pulsate throughout your body, then when you become aware of it, you now have the ability of letting it go. And from that, you can now be, whether you want to call it more level-headed or um, more compassionate, but what happens is you're less quick to anger, for sure, um, and you bring a bit of equanimity. Um, and everybody's different, right? Yeah, so some people yeah. start very saintly, and other people like me are a little bit on the other end of the spectrum, spectrum but... The process, I think, is very helpful to, 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 to most who try it. Okay, so, you know, it was quite interesting. You say it's kind of like the practice of law, and that kind of clicked with me a bit. And you said it's personal. And, and it's not just passive, either. It's something that is ongoing. That's what I hear you saying. And, it, and you're actually doing a process. And it's becoming more like a profession in a, in a funny way. Yeah, it's, <clears throat> so to me, you know, people, you know, my daughters, I have a 9 and 11 year old, they ask me, you know, what do you do? <laughs> and I say, well, you know, lawyers help people. We help people with their problem. And so you take, you know, we've got books on our shelf of statutes, we have books of cases. But the whole idea is somebody comes in, you're taking that background, right. and you're taking your own experience, and now you're putting forward your mental effort and you're solving somebody's problem. It's a very active process, and it's very personal. So if you're not doing it, it's not getting done. The practice right. of law doesn't exist in a textbook on a shelf. That's really cool. I yeah. really like the way that so. you, you've told me about the meditation and the law. I never thought of it as being similar. Yeah. <laughs> I, th I thought they were <clears throat> miles apart, frankly. Yeah, no. They're, um, uh, again, I started active meditation practice. Um, partly in response to being a lawyer and the stress of it. And I found after, you know, banging my head against the wall of it that there actually is a great deal of similarity between the two. And rather than trying to just emulate something that took place 100 years ago or 2,000 years ago, you need to internalize it and... Um, make it your own. Make it your own and, and, and bring your best effort to it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you've kind of given us a philosophical background of, of meditation or, or an understanding of what it means in your mind. But what, what do you do? What, what are the, what are the um, you know, for, for someone that's viewing someone doing meditation, what, what, are, what are they seeing? So, so meditation is a practice that many religious traditions have had. Christianity, Judaism, Buddhism, Vedic, uh, Hindu. So there is a commonality. Um, there was meditation practice in uh, Greek literature. And so sitting meditation is one form of meditation. And so sitting meditation is a lot of the practice I do, which is the form of Zen, Zen Buddhism, Zen practice. And the term Zazen, which is the most... Um, regular practice, it just means sitting meditation. So Zen is a transliteration from a Chinese term, which is a transliteration from a Sanskrit term, which essentially is to, is, is to meditate, and Zazen is sitting meditation. So you're sitting on a cushion, your legs are folded, your hands are in your lap, and your body is essentially like a, somebody is holding a coat hanger through your head. And so you're upright, your lungs are not compressed, your organs are not compressed, but it's not like you're in the military and about to salute a senior officer. There's a relaxation to it. 
I'm and, trying to do this as you're talking, by the way. Okay. And so as we do it, and so you have your hands in your lap, and some people meditate with their eyes open, other people meditate with their eyes closed, some people meditate facing a wall, some people face away, I do both. Um, and I just let my eyelids droop, and I unfocus my gaze, and I bring my attention to, first and foremost, uh, the act of breathing. And breathing is a nice anchor because it is something you can consciously control. You can breathe quickly or slowly, up to a point. But it will happen whether you uh, think about it or not. Mm -hmm. So when you're lying in bed and sleep, of course you're breathing. And so what you're doing is letting your attention fall onto your breath. And you're feeling the breath and the sensation rising and falling. And then a common technique is to breathe in with a number and breathe out. So breathing in with one, breathing out with two, feeling the gap in between. And then if you get to 10, and that's a big if, then you just start at one again. Because there is no, there is no prize for keeping your, your, your attention until you get to 1,000. And that just creates a whole different motivation where it becomes something where you're trying to get the fastest time or trying to get the best grade. And there's no, there's no one else. You're it. And so you're just bringing your attention and, and, and the, the beauty of it and the, the, the challenge of it is when you recognize your attention has slipped away. And sometimes you can recognize it very quickly and other times you realize you've been daydreaming for two minutes. It's just letting it go, literally turning a switch, just letting it go and bringing your attention back. So, the, so there's, a, there's a physical and a mental part of it kind of combined. I hear you saying. Yeah, very much so. So you're not, you're not um, focused on the act of breathing. What you're doing is using the natural act of breathing as an anchor for your attention. And you can then you know, basically fall into it, is how, I, is how it physically feels to me. You just kind of fall into it. And you know, I've done retreats uh, lengthy where you're meditating 15 hours a day for mm. more wow. than a week. Um, and it, first time you do it, you think there's no way after 30 minutes, you're like, there's no way I can do this. Yeah, yeah. And then you find that you, you, you get better at it. You get uh, more, your, your mind is much more receptive to it. And, but it's the, same, it's the same technique, no matter where you are on the spectrum, whether you're a beginner, whether you've been doing it for 10 years or 30 years. Um, but it's that ability to let go of the passing emotion, the thought, the concern that comes up, those are always going to come up. You're not trying to suppress them. It's just when they come up, you recognize them. And the earlier you recognize them, the easier they are to let go. And how long have you been doing this? How long has, have you been? I mean, I started um, and, with... And how, how, excuse me. How did you get into it? And, tell, and how long have you been doing it? I started with texts and you know, cassette tapes back in the day, uh, back in college, um, you know, back when I was 19. 20 years old. What, what was the motivation at um, that point? I, I would say there was a religious aspect to it. Okay. I had always had just an interest in it and a strong interest in poetry, which led me to haiku and other forms of Japanese and Chinese poetry. And it just seemed to connect with me in a way that led into meditation. And then one of the reasons I came to Hawaii was for the, uh, the Zen Buddhist teacher here, Robert Aitken, uh, who started a group here in Hawaii that's now worldwide. Um, and so that was the connection. And then here, practicing with a teacher at, you know, with a community, it just makes it easier. It, it's, there's nothing, there's no secret. The, the culture of Hawaii, it, it helps. Uh, the culture of Hawaii is great. Yeah. It, it really, if you're a Buddhist in Hawaii, or you practice yoga, or you practice uh, vipassana meditation, or other types of meditation, Hawaii is just, it's just great. And it's, it's, I think part of it is just the, um, what I know of the history of, of Hawaiian culture, and not just their openness and mm -hmm. acceptingness, but the fact that if you, you know, I love Hawaiian music, and there is a patience to Hawaiian music that you that I think is fairly unique. And and, 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 yeah. and I want to ask you a little bit more about that after our break about Hawaiian okay. culture 
and letting go. I really want to learn about letting go and how that applies to being a lawyer. We're going to take a short break right now. We'll be back and All right. let go after that. Okay? All right. Sounds good. Thank you very much. Aloha and mabuhay. My name is Emmy Ortega Anderson, inviting you to join us every Tuesday here on Pinoy Power Hawaii with Think Tech Hawaii. We come to your home at 12 noon every Tuesday. We invite you to uh, listen, watch uh, for our mission of empowerment. We aim to enrich, enlighten, educate, entertain, and we hope to empower. Again, maraming salamat po, mabuhay, and aloha. Hi, I'm Rusty Komori, host of Beyond the Lines on Think Tech Hawaii. My show is based on my book, also titled Beyond the Lines, and it's about creating a superior culture of excellence, leadership, and finding greatness. I interview guests who are successful in business, sports, and life, which is sure to inspire you in finding your greatness. Join me every Monday as we go Beyond the Lines at 11 a.m. Aloha. Welcome back. I'm Mark Shklov, host of Law Across the Sea on Think Tech Hawaii. I'm here with Barry Sullivan, uh, who is a lawyer who practices stressful law in Hawaii, but also practices med meditation. And I've learned quite a bit from our talk so far, Barry. Uh, you know, the fact that you equate the practice of law and the practice of meditation is very interesting to me. I never thought of it in those terms. You also talked about letting go. And you talked about how you got to be, I mean, maybe deeper into uh, the meditation because of the practice of law. Could, could tell me a little bit about how, you, you know, how the law affected your meditation and what it means to let it go. Can I, those are two, yeah. two different questions, but, but please. Well, the, with the practice of law, we were talking about <clears throat> how it's something that you're doing at a particular time. And so that is very much meditation. So some people come to meditation and they say, oh, I'm going to have this beatific or religious vision, or I'm going to have this great realization experience, and everything is going to be better from there on out. And after you do it for a while, you realize that it is like the practice of law, because when you're done with one case. You put that on the shelf and you have the tools that you develop, but then you move on to the next one. And what you did for that one may or may not work for the next one. And the person you were for that may or may not be the person you need to be for the next problem. And so that's what I really think is the parallel and the commonality between you know, the practice. And one joke about being a lawyer is that we have to keep practicing because we never get it right. <laughs> you know, right? Right, yeah. So course. the idea is you're it, it's I, not I, I it's not it. the aspiration for this great one time super cool, you know, holy experience or feeling of complete calm and dispassion. Um, but it's something that you bring to all of your life. I think hopefully I'm a little better around the house, a little better with my partners, a little better with my associates and clients. And so it is just something that is constantly evolving, constantly refining, um, and just goes to me hand in hand with, with what we do as lawyers. And, and it's, it's a practice. It's, I, I hear you saying that. So it's something that even though the cir circumstances may change, the method or how you live personally or practice it remains the, the same. You, you try to continue to practice the same type of meditation or law depending on what situation you're in as you go through life. Yeah, and you find that as a lawyer, you can just, you're, you're, you can become fully absorbed in what you're doing. Mm -hmm. The whole afternoon will pass, and yet you have not put any conscious effort into keeping your attention there because it's just rested there the whole time. And that's a great feeling because usually you're very productive and you get a good result. You can provide good advice. And so I think that's Part of the interplay is you're, you're bringing what meditation does and you're bringing it into your life and then you also recognize that meditation does not replace your life. It doesn't replace the ethical mores that I was raised with and that 
is infused through our culture. Um, it doesn't replace, you know, the guidance we get from the law, both, you know, as it's practiced here in Hawaii and in the United States and in the world. And so you're constantly mashing the two together, and they're rocks and slowly grinding each other down, and hopefully we get a little better at dealing with it and do a little better for our, for our clients and, and our society. And is that what the letting it go is? Is that part of that? And, 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 and the stress you get in law, can you let it go through the meditation? Yeah. Is, that, is, so, that, is that, so, that what I'm hearing? So, so the letting the go is, a, is yeah. another benefit of it. So mm -hmm. I was talking more about what you're able to bring to the practice of the law, but one thing you are able to do is when something doesn't go your way, mm -hmm. which, as we know, that's... You go to trial and there's a winner and a loser generally. Yeah, yeah. And so if you're on the, the downside, you got to be able to let go of those emotions. You got to let go of the, you know, I, I really don't like the word attachment, but there's really not a better word that I found. You got to let go of that mental hook that's tied up in what happened. You want to embody the lessons you learned from it, but you need to be able to bring yourself when you get home. You don't want to bring the bad outcome to your children. You don't want to bring it to your spouse, your partner. Um, you don't, definitely don't want to bring and, it to your next And it's client. hard when you're a practicing lawyer to, to, to let go sometimes. It is. You know, when, when, you know, I've done, been fortunate enough to do some large transactions, you know, and you'll, you'll finish a deal that's very complicated and the money is gigantic. I mean, it's, you know, it's billions of dollars. And then I'll finish on a Friday and the client is super excited. They don't have to go through this for another five years. I then pick up the next problem on Monday. And so the nature yeah. of what lawyers do is we are problem solvers. So yeah. we are always getting people in crisis and conflict, yeah. and we just and have we, to and figure we take it, it on. We take it on, we do. too, don't, don't we? And it's hard, not, yeah. it's hard yeah. not to sleep with it. It's yeah. hard not to take it yeah. with you wherever you go. So, yeah. so, so you, the meditation has helped you? Definitely. In, it in it is. Yeah. You know, I just finished uh, a, a, a three-week arbitration you know, 8.30 in the morning until 5.30 at night, mm. um, sometimes on Saturdays. And if that had happened 25 years ago, which, which it had, I remember never being able to let go of it. And now there's just a feeling of liberation that it's, 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 makes you a better lawyer because you're bringing fresh ideas and fresh energy the very next morning rather than carrying with you kind of, you know, the, the issues that preceded the day before. Okay, so, so the letting go uh, is a, a mental state that you bring by doing this exercise, if you will. And yep. I may not be using the right words, but... And is there anything else that you do? I mean, is there anything affirmative that, that you do? Uh, I mean, to me it seems like, uh, y yes, you're practicing an affirmative exercise, yes, but it, it, do you... It, it, do you just keep that within yourself, or do you go out and do something else along with it? Um, there are meta meditations and other meditations that you are basically doing affirmations and doing you know, loving kindness and things of that nature, which, which I have done from time to time in the past. Helping people? Is that, is that what you mean? Or? Yeah, or you're actually um, inculcating in yourself these um, feelings of genuine... Uh, empathy and concern for the well-being of others and and to improve their lives and so the idea is by you know doing that affirmation and incorporating it you will then embody it outside of sitting down and and you're meditating all the time so whether you're driving a car whether you're whether you're talking to somebody on the phone when you can give your full attention to somebody that's a key aspect of meditation is just to be there and not to think about what you're going to say next and not to think about the problem that, or not to be looking at your phone when you're talking to your spouse. That's, I think, one of the great benefits. And, well, let me ask you this. Have you, do, do you meditate when you're sitting in court and waiting for a hearing, or even during a hearing? How, what, what happens? It's a very different meditation. Okay. I'm meditating by paying attention. So what I'm doing is I'm paying attention to what's going on. And one thing that people misunderstand about meditation is that when you're on the cushion, you're creating an environment to help develop a skill set. But the skill set needs to be used in your daily life, in your real activities. And so when you're meditating in the courthouse, you're listening to the judge, you're watching the jurors, you're listening to the attorney on the other side. So that is the meditation because you're the gap between that action 
and your perception narrows and you have a clearer take on things. Are I you think. consciously doing the breathing at the time you're, when you're in court? Um, only, only in the breaks, only in the breaks. Okay. And I only do that just as a reminder, just okay. to, you know, like you take one or two breaths and that just allows you to kind of let things go. Okay, now we're gonna move on to act number two. They have an intermission and a play, and part of it is just to let you digest what took place and look forward. And that, I think, in our, in our increasingly rushed world, and you question comes up in conversation, somebody's immediately on Google. Unfortunately, that's sometimes me. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but the idea is just, just to give a moment. And yeah. just, okay, now that that issue is decided, give a moment, and then you can bring your attention a little bit better to, to the next. Okay, and you were talking about... Um what I kind of sense is like pro bono work in a way. I, I mean, you, you, you were talking about putting other people's minds in your own or thinking of what other people are doing and maybe showing some goodness. I noticed that you did some, some meditation with, with some prisoners. Is that, is that what you were talking about? I, I did. So <clears throat> there's a group of volunteers um, that started maybe 30 years ago, and, and we've been volunteering, and people take take turns at both uh, Halaba, uh, the medium security correctional facility, and also the federal detention center. And you just go in and you are teaching meditation and practicing with inmates. And these are people who generally things went pretty wrong. Yeah. They're only there because something went wrong. And a lot of it, and we've had some inmates that have come out and maintained a practice. And I think really, really have shown the benefit of it. Um, and there are very active programs um, all over the country in different, um, different traditions. And I think the results are that if you could just take a moment and gather yourself without having to be reminded, the chances of you making that really bad decision in that split second, it's gonna go way down. And that's what we try to focus on. And, 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 and the same thing with the practice of law then. It's the practice of life, really, isn't that what we're talking about? Yeah, yeah, completely, and there's two sides. That's the one thing the law always reminds you, yeah. is that even though you think your client is right, or you think your idea is right, you always have to recognize that's probably not 100% true, even on your best day, and just to listen to the other side a little more. Barry, that's good advice for all of us. I appreciate you coming, telling us about it, and if uh, lawyers, that watch this show are, are interested, can they contact you and learn where to go for, the, for mediation? I mean, meditation? <laughs> Ab absolutely, meditation. <laughs> meditation. They can contact me anytime. All right, Barry, thank sure. you very much for being my guest today. Aloha. No, thank you. We will be back in two weeks with another Law Across the Sea program. Aloha, everybody.